Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor Landing Takes. And let's get right to the news. Alright, today I want to talk about a couple of topics, but I'm going to start out with Ahsoka. Okay. Ahsoka Season 1 came out in October 2023. We've already heard reports that it's going to be a while yeah. before we get it. I mean, January 2024, Lucasfilm was like, yep, Filoni is already actively developing the second season. While he's also being the CCO... And overseeing future projects. That's a lot. It's a lot on his plate, It's a plate, lot yeah. for, for one person. I mean, he's even confirmed he is the sole writer on Ahsoka Season 2. That's rough when he's got, like, no one else helping him write, even. I'm sure he's got someone helping him a little Sole writer. Side. He said yeah. so. Well, yeah. He said, I'm so well into that as well. I've been writing it. I'm still the single writer on it. So I'm enjoying doing that, but it's a challenge, of course. Working some of these arcs through has been a challenge. I've got an idea for him. Hmm. He should call this guy by the name of Timothy Zahn. He's, a, he's, a, pretty, he's a pretty solid writer. Ah. And um, say, hey, every part with Thrawn, I want you to write it. Every time he speaks, hmm. you, you write that for me, please. Well, what worries me, though, is he said that it's a challenge. And I thought, okay, being the oh, sole yeah. writer would be a challenge. But I thought it was just because of maybe his time constraints with all the other projects that he is it heading like he's up and working on. to write it, yeah. Yeah, but instead it sounds like he's actually struggling to write through the arcs that he's created and left us with. That's, uh, that's a problem when you uh, take mm -hmm. off and don't know where you're going. Yeah, I mean, we also heard that season two is supposed to be written with a tentative ending just in case season three doesn't happen. Maybe that's his issue. He's struggling to wrap it up and leave it open-ended at the same time. Right, because how do you do that? Remember... Well, Acolyte said it was a finished yeah. story, but it definitely left no, it was, giant gaping holes. Yeah, it was definitely written with multiple seasons in mind. So that, that may be a recent development, too. Perhaps he was well into the writing process. Acolyte happens. Disney, Kathleen Kennedy, whoever it might be, comes to him and says, you know what, we're having some problems with the, our Disney Star Wars shows on Disney+. Plus. Maybe uh, write this to be an ender. But also, perhaps, a season three. Well, I don't think they like the reputation of being a canceled show. I mean, Acolyte is their first yeah. official canceled project. Well, what's stupid about that is the Acolyte, as you already mentioned, was pitched as a one-season thing. If you don't put mm -hmm. all those little stupid teases and stuff in there, then um, we may have thought it was just a one-season thing that didn't get was it greenlit just for more. Was Leslie Headland canceled. who was like, if I just keep saying it's more, then it'll be know. more? I have no idea. Okay, so he also, Dave Filoni, I'm speaking of, in this interview, because they, of course, was like, with Skeleton Crew coming out, he's making some rounds too, because as the COO, he's involved in this project as well. So during all of this, they also asked him about how the Mandalorian and Grogu is doing. The movie, yeah. Yes, the movie. And Dave has confirmed it is officially finished filming. Good, good. Good is right, because I mean, that's if it's a, coming that's a Star out, Wars movie in the can. How about that? Good How job. That? Woo! You did it. It only took you like five years. Oh, yeah, but now it's going to take them, what, another year, year to half, edit yeah. it? <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, May of uh, 2026 is the uh, release date. Mm hmm. I'm surprised that there's still secrets. Secrets? Yeah. Yeah. Only the Sith know? I mean, think of it this way, too. Only a limited number of the cast members are even known. Of the movie? Oh, we're talking. Okay. For the Mandalorian and Grogu. Well, we know movie. Sigourney Weaver is in there. Yeah. Who else? <laughs> Pedro Pascal maybe might appear. <laughs> His voice will be in there. Probably Grogu done by will, AI because be he's there. too busy. Oh. Grogu, yes, Grogu will make an appearance. Um, we don't know who else. Yeah. I mean, Zeb was in the trailer, I guess. I think they confirmed Zeb, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, he was in the yeah. trailer. Well, I mean, in the, the trailer yeah. that we didn't get to see that one, yeah. Yeah, I wonder who else. You know who else is going to be in it? Who? Our clone with a mustache. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking about John uh, yes. Carlo Esposito. I feel like he's back. I feel like they bring Thrawn in. I feel like this movie really needs Thrawn. to be. A, I feel like this movie needs to be a connection piece. If they're going to be, as this trailer that we did see a leaked version of showed, if there's going to be fighting against remnants of the Empire, doesn't it make sense that maybe Thrawn is involved? So you think this is maybe? post Ahsoka after Thrawn has come back and kind of. I feel like the Mandoverse has been in order so far. It has, even though it really has been kind of complicated at times mm -hmm. with the, the exact timeline and when things so are taking place and how long time goes Maybe the New on. Republic, maybe Carson Tiva finally seek out, we need more help, We we're, let's recruit the Mandalorian, you know, get him involved because we need help. 
Well, because the Empire is really finally acting up because they have a united leader now. Well, here's the fun question, because we see in Ahsoka that there's a lot of skepticism about Thrawn or Ezra being alive. Mm -hmm. And now Ezra has come back wearing some really unique, funky Stormtrooper armor. Yes. So do they believe Ezra that Thrawn has returned or are they going to continue He's to be the armor? embodiment of belief that Thrawn has uh, yeah. come back? Hera's been spouting for you. Oh, we just have your story that, you know, as we're still alive. You, yeah. you know? Well, they didn't know. I mean, but honestly, now she may Ezra's have coming it in back. Core. Yeah, he's back and he's like, this is and where he's, he's been. This is what happened. So, well, yeah, he's <laughs> mm -hmm. he's a gray area when it comes to Jedi. He's a... He never he's, got the, the he knighting. He wasn't knighted, yes, but he was, he's a force Padawan. Did I just say know? gray area you and did. Jedi I, I kind of oh. enjoyed that in my own way. But, yeah. He's he's back. He literally can say, hey, Thrawn is back. He could probably point out some general coordinates of where Thrawn's ship is. He should be able to. He has one of his uh, shuttles. We know so... that the ship went to Dathomir. Yep. And I'm probably presuming after. Ezra didn't fly out when they were still in hyperspace. No, he probably, as soon as they dropped out of hyperspace, he probably uh, got out of there. Right, so he, so he might probably know would, where they yeah. are and what they're up to. He might have quite a bit of information we wouldn't know because him and Sabine never actually talked about anything in the previous season. No, Filoni decided any important conversation need to be had out of sight of yeah, the audience. Yeah, we didn't need to know any of that. Because it's, it's not important. We'd rather see the action. We are a one-dimensional society. We are. But we also have to consider how much time will they have had pass in-universe before the Mandalorian and Grogu movie takes place? I don't think much, right? I don't think a lot, but... Depending on what they decide to do, I mean, even if it's a year or two years, could, could be, Grogu's yeah. training in in the Mandalorian ways or even his strength in the Force become stronger? Maybe. I mean, there are a lot of people who think he's going to be like the ultimate warrior, and I don't mean the WWE mm. wrestler, but, you know, Mandalorian training eventually gets Jedi training, and he's just going to be a little badass who can do it all. And I could see that happening, honestly. People yeah. love the character. He's very popular amongst... Pretty much everybody, everybody across yeah, the fandom. Yeah, I don't fandom. think anybody dislikes him. But no, you might not he love him. He can be a little but... over the top at times, but I still like him. I still yeah, like him quite he's a bit. fine. He's adorable. He's yeah. bringing in a generation of Star Wars fans as well. So the more they can keep him involved in the story at some point, oh, the better involved, they are, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think the Mando and Grogu movie, I think maybe some time goes by and they've kind of been on vacation and mm -hmm. then Carson Tiva is my guest, shows up on Mando's front mm -hmm. door and is like, I hey, we have a special mission. We need you to go into enemy territory, deep into the Empire, the Remnants, wherever they're setting up, and do this for us. And then he goes in there and finds out that it's a lot worse than... Than you could have ever imagined. imagined. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like that idea for the plot, because it can lead into a bigger scenario, yeah. a bigger war, while keeping this movie more of a singular type action adventure yeah. for Mando yeah, because you and don't, Grogu. Yeah, you don't need to have seen everything else to understand like oh okay we're, we're after the return of the Jedi mm -hmm. and we're sending in a, a special Mando or for a special mission and oh my goodness the Empire isn't as uh, weak as we thought they were. Right. It's, it's easily explainable. It still makes it accessible to all the audiences. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. No I, I think that is going to be the basic plot more or less. I mean probably some differences but that's my guess. All right, last thing I'm going to bring up today is Advent Calendar. Uh, yes. We are moving right Day along. Five Day already. 5 And in, I guess, in honor of Mandalorian and Grogu, we have a walker. Yeah, because we're supposed to see those. We have seen them <laughs> in the trailer that nobody saw except for at D23 and yeah. pirating. Online. That little little AT-AT? Uh, a little, little AT-AT action. AT action, yeah. Yeah. It's my, my favorite walker. Yes, I know. You have, a, you have the bigger version I as do. Well. I got it as a Christmas gift. Yeah, sitting yeah. there on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I'll show that one as well. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's, oh, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. I have a little chicken walker too, though. I'm a little you ATST. Do. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a few pieces. We got a couple Legos. Not, not much. Not a couple. We dabble in Lego. Yeah, they uh, take up a lot of space. So. They and they're not do. cheap either. No, I also have Bag End. You do have Bag End. Uh, I'm very proud of. We used to have more, but we had to get rid of them because we had no space for them. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we, at one point, really got into Lord of the Ring Lego. <laughs> Remember my old setup at my, like, old place? Yeah, I do. And I had, like, Sheila, the Sheila crawling coming down, down the, the wall. Season. I will never yeah. forget that, yes. That was really like, cool. What the heck? I'm like, yeah. You had it, like, floating in air off a string that looked like yeah. silk, and so it was it coming like it was down, to get, the, down to, to get the hobbits. Yeah. It was very cool. I wish, maybe you do have pictures of that. I, I don't know. Probably I'd probably have to search not. through, like, probably like real pictures or something. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, we're rambling about not star wars so 
that's all we got for you this time. Now it is your turn. Take to the comments below. Let us know what you think of any and all of today's news, and let's talk some Star Wars. And so, until next time, thanks for watching.